Alrighty, uh, let's get started. Uh, welcome everyone in Varchitex, Tinkernauts, Dustin, Limo, Mike, Richie, Julissa, and uh, truly appreciate all of you for coming out. Um, as usual, starting off in each call, I'll begin talking a bit about how my week has been, going both on the uh, Invarch side and also going into some interesting personal stuff I'd like to share. So yeah, I mean, things have been uh, pretty much, uh, if you haven't noticed, I mean, heads down, fingers typing, I mean, more so for Gabe and his Chadness and with the Invarch development team, but uh, you, you know, things have been heads down for the entire team and we're just busy building and uh, ensuring that we're doing our best to deliver on the technologies that we want to bring forth to uh, Dotsama and to have those innovative solutions for everyone. So on the personal side of things, I would say a pretty interesting thing for myself would be I'm finally going back at the gym because I was like sick for a few days. I don't know about you guys, but I mean, uh, primarily I'm not like an avid gym goer, or at least I wasn't uh, until I uh, went into some personal training. And now it's like, I can't not go to the gym on a regular basis so yeah i mean that's that's really much it for me uh if anyone else would like to share how their week's going and um something they'd like to share about themselves i mean please go ahead for is yours absolutely bullish <laughs> what are you bullish on limo <laughs> everything everything oh i mean that's a powerful statement considering what's currently going on in the markets i guess broader web3 community but i mean that's an optimistic take i would say <laughs> everybody. I'm Richie. Welcome, everyone. Thank you for coming all today. Yulissa, Nikolai, Dobropajalovit, Kanashu, Shalashu. Thank you guys for coming. Uh, this week, I'm super excited about Tinker Staking. Can't wait for that to go live. Hopefully, AJ, you're going to have some news for us about that, dropping some alpha. I'm super bullish on Tinker. Can't wait to do my staking too. Oh, yeah, for sure. For sure. But yeah, uh, I'd like to start things off with... Uh, highlighting uh some major things just a few um otherwise we'd be here for a long time but what's been going on in dotsama things that uh, caught my eye personally starting off with what i call a banger tweet from the man himself gavin wood um where he shared his two cents on the matter which has been going on like with um ftx alameda SBF, a quote from CZ, to which uh, Gavin follows up with saying, like, not been paying attention, protection comes through decentralization, and that's the point of Web3 and the trustless technology. And I think that is a truly powerful, I guess, follow-up or rather statement from Gavin Wood himself and to see that. So the next part is um, Akala's Network's uh, token, ACA, is now live on Ledger Wallet. And... I love it when this man that I will mention uh, comes out with a very intuitive, educative um, piece. Uh, so Young Beef, uh, aka Crypto Cowboy OG, published a recent article on Gov2. I'm still dissecting that article myself, even though I've like read it quite a few times. I'm not like a like a governance head, I would say, but I mean it's very important to really get into. Uh, governance on Polkadot um, and to understand the mechanics and how things will change when Gov2 comes into full swing. Moving forward, I'd like to talk about, you know, a bit of crypto, a bit of Web3. Uh, to start off, at this point, I think it's fair to say that about everyone or mostly everyone knows the whole debacle with FTX, SBF, and the crypto markets. I also want to point out, um, you know, headlines are headlines. They're dominating. They're the most talked about, of course. Other events do happen in the background. A lot of things do get overlooked. Um, so I kind of want to highlight these things, and they're actually quite relevant uh, when it comes to the MVARCH network, what we're building. So on Monday, the University of Alabama submitted uh, six crypto-focused trademark applications. And according to Mike Condutis, if I, I'm sorry if I butchered that name, the intentions of these applications revolve around NFTs, digital tokens, online stores for virtual goods. And what's been deduced from this is that the University of Alabama plans to use these six trademarks to offer NFT focused services. So I think it's pretty interesting that we're more at the forefront, like we're now seeing academic institutions really injecting themselves into, you know, blockchain technology, these new emerging technologies, I would say as an umbrella. I think it's great. Like, I think it opens up, I guess, more so um, a channel for younger people, for people that are academically focused and driven uh, to look into or to dive deeper into nft technology more so like blockchain technology and for the shoe enthusiasts or sneaker heads out there if you haven't heard nike launched swoosh which is a new digital community for nike products so i think that's going to be pretty interesting i have quite a few friends who are in the shoe game and have been in the shoe game and i wonder 
how that will go into their, I guess, everyday life when it comes to the shoe business. Uh, because I mean, like we all know that physical assets, you know, there's nothing like them, but at the same time, I mean, with blockchain technology and with it being so innovative, your assets being on chain and being digital. Personally, I think like that will really change the game. So I'm interested to see uh, what's next uh, when it comes to um, the shoe market. And so on Wednesday, uh, news broke that Sony, which if you don't know, is the company that makes and is famous for the PlayStation gaming console, has been actively looking into the use of NFTs and blockchain technology in video games. So they are expanding into the development of NFTs and their own blockchain. I think that's huge. I think, yes, like kind of late into the game in a way, even though as a whole, this entire industry is still at that early maybe not even like early adoption stage, like maybe some of you can correct me on that. We know that like gaming is huge in the Web3, Web3 gaming, Metaverse, you know, with even in Dotsama, like with Remark Technology, Fallout World, Bit.Country and others that I haven't mentioned. Um, but I think that's cool. I think, I think if any company were to do it correctly or maybe in a very elegant way, I think that would be Sony. I mean, they have the audience, they have the technology, they've been in the in the video game business for years. And I think it's going to be super exciting. And on Thursday, news came out on the Federal Bank Reserve of New York and global banking giants are going into a 12-week digital, uh, sorry, digital dollar pilot labeled as a proof of concept. This pilot is to explore and analyze how well or poorly maybe uh, would implementing a virtual dollar token and central bank funding would go. So these banks include HSBC, City, BNY Mellon, and Wells Fargo. In terms of transaction infrastructure, MasterCard is the chosen one in this regard. Uh, so as far as the public knows, this pilot will be carried out using only simulated data, as far as we know. <laughs> uh, but I think with those that do know more about blockchain technology and the world of finance. I mean, I think that just really translates into, if I'm wrong, correct me, but I think that translates into, you know, the use of CBDCs and how well the New York population would receive it and uh, how well it can be uh, well implemented. So, and of course, I mean, I don't think you ever uh, go through a day or a week not hearing about any event or update when it comes to crypto, its utilization, innovations, and so forth. Um, so I would love to hear what any of you think about these news. Um, please speak up and let's chat about it. Fuck CBDCs. <laughs> I second that. Anyone else? <laughs> CBD? <laughs> CBDCs, Dustin. <laughs> oh. oh, man. One letter away. <laughs> For anyone else that doesn't say anything, then you're for CBDCs. I'm, I, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I mean, it's just the next step for them to be able to censor, like whatever transactions you want to do, um, restricting you from being able to fly, <clears throat> uh, from being able to have like high-speed internet, for example. It's not a good move, in my opinion. Don't forget, that's going to be linked to, you know, carbon taxes as well. So they've actually found a way Social credit to score. charge us for the air that we're breathing. That's, that's crazy. That's insane. I didn't know that part, actually. I think it's, um, it's definitely a realm that I think for those that have been in the crypto space for a while or in the Web3 space for a while, I mean, it's really only a matter of time until it's making its way into our reality of it. Uh, oh, hey, David from Oak Network. What's up, man? <laughs> What's up, guys? Not much. How's it going? Good. I'm uh, I'm up early to have some call with some different providers, so I figured I'd just pop in and say what's up. Hey, well, always appreciate you, man, being here. Thank you. Uh, but yeah, no, CBDCs, uh, if you don't know what they are, a centralized bank, digital currencies, if I uh, uh, said that correctly. In a nutshell, I mean, think about it, you know, your your government, where you are, create a virtual digital token or virtual currency token. Um, and essentially how it, I think it works just from the information that I have been gathering and digesting over the past couple of years. So for example, like I'm in Canada, so I'll just exemplify this, but if Canada sees that its travel sector is uh, doing poorly, um, economically speaking. If everyone were utilizing CBDCs, um, and that's kind of more so, I guess, like coerced or forced, like there's no other, it's like a social token. We would be told not to spend it anywhere else, but hey, you know, just go travel, right? And that brings out a lot of restrictions, you know, limitations to our liberties, our freedoms, to what we can or cannot do. 
Um, I think that's more so of the worst case scenario. But I mean, we've already been seeing like pilots in China and they've been using a CBDC. Uh, I don't know too much of a like, I don't know the details of how it's been used over there and uh, what the Chinese population thinks, but it's here. I just, it's kind of scary. <laughs> but, but at the same time, I mean, like, that's why there's this, I think with this whole FTX and this whole SBF Alameda research, this whole fiasco going on, I think it's also a good thing that in a way, like it's bringing more attention and an importance and a significance um, to decentralized finance. If you haven't noticed, um, a lot of the DeFi platforms have been going up, uh, whereas CeFi has obviously been going down. So yeah, I mean, I feel like it's a double-edged sword in that regard. But yeah, I know that you're all here, not just for going through Web3 and crypto news and updates, but in Varch. I know probably the first thoughts that come to mind is um, things have calmed down and have become a little bit quieter around the project. Changes have definitely been made as well. But I want to reassure all of you that we are still here. We've been pretty much been like heads down and building, like I mentioned earlier in the call. Also that we can deliver on the tech that we've been talking about. To begin, a rather short, but I personally think a very cool update uh, is one from SubID. So two days ago, SubID, their Twitter account shared that Invarch Tinkernet has been added to SubID. So now you can see your Tinker balances on there. And uh, the Invarch team, uh, on behalf of the Invarch team, thank you SubID team for making this possible and expanding the accessibility for Tinkernauts everywhere. Next up, I know that this isn't an update, but more so a discussion topic. So with OSIF, uh, the on-chain innovation funding protocol of Invarch, uh, for those that, uh, that I don't know, uh, is currently being worked on uh, today by the Invarch development team. You can think of it as like a social funding mechanism in Web3, on-chain crowdfunding, decentralized community angel investing. So that's referring to the IP donations part of uh, OSIF. Uh, truly a launch pad for ideas. So to understand the most basic form, which I'm sure most of you know, is staking tokens on chain. Uh, this is a widely known method, which is like staking to secure a network. Uh, now it's mentally organized in your head, like these naming conventions. IP staking is more so the general term, whether, um, whether referring to staking an NFT, also known as an IP set on the Amarch network, um, to the net, to the network for others to support either on Tinkernet or the Invarch network. Um, and then Tinker staking is staking Tinkernet's native token. Personally, I think the technology, infrastructure, and vision built and developed around and for OSIF is phenomenal. And like all of you, I am excited to see uh, Tinker staking finally be deployed uh, soon. Now, if you are still fresh to the concept of IP staking on the Invarch network, I highly, highly recommend that you check out both of these articles. So there's this one article, which you can easily find on our Twitter. I'll also send links in the, in the chat box as well. There is the Invarch IG Series 5, um, which is on the OSIF protocol. And there is also an article written by Crane, a writer for the Kusumarian, a well-known thought leader in the Dotsami ecosystem and a member of Chaos DAO. And uh, he uh, wrote an article called uh, An Introduction to Invarch's IP Staking for Investors. So that being said, yesterday, an update was given to the Invarch Tinkernet and a broader Invarch network community on the progress of IP staking. So that update, the Invarch development team confirmed that the code for IP staking has been completed. From that, before IP staking goes fully live, the Invarch development team is currently writing and running tests. And following that will be a full audit of the code. So for the Invarch community members in this call, or those that will watch the recap later, <laughs> if you don't know what an audit is, in this case, it refers to what is known in the industry as a blockchain security audit. A blockchain security audit is a structured and systematic code review of a particular blockchain development project, in this case, IP staking, and it's done manually. So the purpose of a blockchain security audit is to find security flaws and vulnerabilities in the code. To give moreover uh, a general context, it's important for the Invarch development team to conduct like an architecture analysis, security assessments, um, exploitation simulations, um, tests, and remediation, which is patching vulnerabilities. But I am not a dev and I'm not on the development team, so um, I don't know the specifics when it comes to that. Uh, but I know in general, that's what uh, consists of a blockchain security audit. So if you have any specific questions or more specific and technically inclined questions for the Invarch development team, please head over to the questions channel in the official Invarch 
community Discord, and you can direct your questions to either Gabe or Pedro. We also had the Invarch monthly update for October that was uh, released about two days ago. October was an absolutely eventful and successful month at the Invarch network for those that were um, here and present. Sorry. <coughs> and uh, the team was sharp, coordinated on all fronts as they delivered on the Invarch Tinkernet's LBP event with Basilisk Finance as well as stirring things up in UtilDAO with a giveaway and airdrop and dropping impressive Get Arch Alpha. I'm just going to take a drink one second. Alrighty, my apologies. Now, of course, um, I won't go through the entire monthly update in detail. Um, for October, it was pretty long. <laughs> but to highlight the month of October at Invarch, uh, the Invarch network team saw some amazing content made by the talented and attentive folks at the Kusumerian. Uh, Shoutouts to Peenan and Sea Saint, of which I will drop the links in the chat here, a Coin Telegraph article officially announcing the Tinkernet LBP event, which I will drop as well. Another awesome article by Crane. So uh, he uh, wrote a financial analysis on Tinkernet's native token Tinker, and I'll share that as well here. And of course, we also saw the Util DAO Tinkerers giveaway. Uh, we had Joe Petrowski from the Web3 Foundation featured in the second episode of Tinker Talks on Twitter Spaces. That's on our YouTube channel as well. Uh, the Tinkernet LBP going live, a UtilDAO AMA in the uh, Kusamaverse, Subsquid minting a repo on GetArch, which was awesome. Thank you. And so much more. Like the list goes on uh, for that month of October. And I think it can be said that the team was pushing and moving and shipping on all fronts. But of course, I mean, time is a construct and uh, we must keep moving forward. And for those that fully digested the most recent Invarch monthly update, for those in the call, I have a question for you. Did you notice any alpha? No one? <laughs> I think Limo has. You're giving it, aren't you? Am I? I mean, it, yeah, was, it was given when the monthly update was released. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. The, uh, the monthly update that really summarizes everything. I mean, personally, I was there through the LBP. I loved the energy around it. You know, uh, uh, it, because it's really organic, no bots, uh, no FUD there. At the same time, I was in the Basilisk uh, server while it was going on uh, for the couple of days that it happened. And there was a great vibe around it. Definitely. Absolutely. Thank you for that comment, Richie. Uh, but I guess I've waited long enough, so I can't say alpha. <laughs> uh, but uh, the alpha, I guess, if you want to consider it alpha, I think I consider it alpha. Invarch Network looking at the month ahead, we'll be releasing our Polkadot crowd loan announcement. That's the alpha. For the newer Invarch techs out there, I'm sure you're wondering, what is a Polkadot crowd loan? Uh, so just to go through, uh, just in case some of you don't know, essentially uh, Polkadot has 100 parachain slots that are leased for access to Polkadot's security and ability to communicate with other chains. To acquire a parachain slot, a project's team must win a candle auction using DOT, which is Polkadot's native token. The tokens for such an auction can be gathered in a few ways, whether it's self-funding through VCs or have a completely community-driven crowd loan, which is, if I'm not mistaken, what we had with Invarch Tinkernet's uh, Kusama crowd loan. So stopping there, um, all relevant information will be made available with this Polkadot crowd loan announcement for the Invarch network. I know some of you may have some burning questions to ask, but I will recommend that you hold on to those questions a little longer because I'm sure that the announcement will answer them. Other than that, you can check out the full Invarch monthly update for October on our Medium, and I shall share that link. Admin when crowd learn. <laughs> well, that's what the Polkadot crowd loan announcements for, Limo. <laughs> like I said, we'll have all that information uh, rewards, I guess, listening as well. Well, I mean, that's a little bit down the line more. But uh, when rewards, when lease ends, uh, <laughs> when crowd loan, uh, we'll have all these questions answered for sure when that announcement comes out. But I appreciate, you know, the excitement currently right now. Thank you so much. But do any of you have any thoughts that you'd like to share on these updates? Anything that I've talked about? The floor is yours. Unbelievably bullish. Limo is consistent. When... <laughs> I don't think I'll be living in the Bahamas, to be honest. I don't want to be there. <laughs> There's some property Not in the Bahamas really cheap now, you know? It's getting liquidated. 
You can get a good apartment for cheap there, no? Oh, I mean, that's a good point. Yeah. Hey, look in the call. Mr. Chad himself. Hey, hello. What's up, Gabe? What's up? I've been uh, writing some jazz for a uh, propellant staking. Good lord. Okay, but you have a Tesla <laughs> coil, like, right next to What's you. What's going you... on? It, so it sounds like you have a Tesla <laughs> a little... coil, like, right next to you, bro. It's a little machine he made. A little... God damn it, I need, I need a new mic. He's building hardware. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so uh, that's pretty much it to this Invarch Weekly Community Call uh, to end things up. Um, again, if you don't know, my name is AJ. I'm Invarch's social media manager. And I truly do thank all of you who have joined me today for uh, the call. Uh, thank you in advance for everyone else um, who will be tuning into the full recap video later, of which will be shared on all of our social media platforms. I hope you all have a wonderful weekend. Shout outs to Limo, Dustin, uh, Richie, Gabe, Last Minute Join, Taicho, Mike, Julissa, Dave from Oak, DJ Board, Absent Minded, everyone else. Thank you so much for joining, and I'll see you in next week's Invarch Weekly Community Call. Have a great weekend, guys.